I love you and I want you to live as long as possible. So listen up. Yes, I'm a selfish bastard. I don't want to lose you. But it's not just for me, it's in your best interest too. There is something extremely important for you right now, right here. Because we all know what we should do with our lives, right? Exercise more, sleep more, smoke and drink less. But we only know it in our heads. It doesn't always reach the heart. It doesn't hit us on an emotional level. And that's a problem, because emotions decide what we do. That's why they called so emotion. Emotions move us. It doesn't matter what you think is right. What really matters is what you feel. So here in this moment where we are sharing this emotional experience, when we are vulnerable, when we look around, it becomes less important how well you know me. In this place, the universe is knocking, opening doors. And it would be so wasteful not to use these raw emotions for the good in the service of life. So don't shut yourself off. Don't close up. Absorb what you see, what you feel. This past Thursday, when my mom passed away, Pohis came by, he cooked me food, kept me the company, and brought his daughter to hang out with mine. And we were sitting there talking about something inconsequential, but one persistent thought kept running through my mind. The most tragic thing is, there is no real difference between us 40-50 year old dudes, 80 years old, or 18 years old. We're all just kids with maybe a little more resilience, but that's it. My mom wanted to buy a new hat, a purse, and see the ocean. She was planning to bake us a birthday cake next week. There was no, I'm old, I'm ready to go on her. She was just as eager for life as our kids. Which reminds me <laughs> of when I was about 15 years old myself. My mom cut us <laughs> with friends <laughs> drinking after school. And that's when she taught me two very important rules. Don't drink and drive. Don't risk your life for something stupid. Stay overnight if you need to. And number two, pour a glass for your mom. <laughs> if you can't beat them, join them and lead them. That's how she lived her life, enjoying every single day and uh, holding some strong opinions. Even in her last days in the hospital, when no one expected such a sudden decline, she made the intentional choice not to undergo surgery. Living intentionally was her way and I can only applaud her for it. We don't have access to a parallel universe to compare all the what-ifs. But the fact that she made a choice brings me peace right now and helps me continue without breaking down. If I were in her place, I'd probably do the same. I'd make an intentional choice because it's better than floating passively like a dead fish. The pain of regret is the worst kind of pain. So we should always strive to live intentionally. Make choices. That's how you reduce your own suffering and protect those around you. But making choices isn't enough. You need the mental and physical resilience, physical buffer, to carry them through if you want to survive. You need cushions to absorb the blows life throws at you. My mom had cancer, but it had been dormant. Uh, she hadn't needed chemo for a long time. Yet after my dad passed away, she started to fade. She wasn't physically sick, but she lost her sense of purpose. There wasn't much love lost between my parents. 
but he was her project, something she was responsible for day and night. There's this famous Japanese concept called Ikigai, your reason for living, the thing that makes you get up every morning. It's not easy to find, but we all have 10, 20, 30 or maybe even 40 years to seek it out. Because when your kids leave home and you retire, you need something big to do. It's not enough to just build a wall, so to speak, you need to build a cathedral. A goal, a big goal gives you back a piece of its glory. Four years ago, in November, I woke up and realized life is what you make it. I chose the biggest goal I could think of, helping to solve aging and guess what? I haven't had a single boring day since. Every morning I wake up with an urge to do something new, something meaningful. And it doesn't even matter if I succeed or not. If you try, you'll find something amazing too. Whether it's art or sending rockets to Mars, start searching for your purpose now. It will give you mental resilience. And the twin to mental resilience is physical resilience. As my mom was losing muscle, I asked her, Mom, are you still doing the exercises? We have this family breathing and whole body movement routine. You've probably seen me doing it everywhere, on vacation, even during ayahuasca retreats, every morning, lubricating the joints. And she said, yes, yes, but something was off. Things were going downhill. Mom, are you doing the legs, the squats? No. Why not? I'm doing them in bed. <laughs> but listen, <laughs> exercising in bed doesn't work. Uh, there is this wonderful concept called the Pareto Principle. You get 80% of the benefit from just 20% of the effort. But you have to put in at least that 20%. You don't have to do a lot. Yes, more is probably better, but life? <laughs> so, if tomorrow morning you spend just a few minutes exercising and then you do it again the next day, and again, after that, across all of us, we are collectively going to save whole life. We'll all live longer. We all feel better. And one or more of us will avoid cancer. I don't know if there is an afterlife, most likely not. But if there is, my mom would approve of you doing that. So, be that person. Be that person. Thank you.